Hi guys, welcome back. <clears throat> Don't worry, we're not doing another banana video. <laughs> Just teasing you. So right under the bananas, we have the Glen Mango. I just wanted to showcase it or update it. It's been a while and uh, it's early February, which is late summer now. And there's good news and there's bad news. Um, let's begin with the bad news. The bad news is um, all the fruitlets fell off and I found out who, who dropped the last ones. It was a bird. Yeah, most of them fell off on their own, but the last five were knocked off by a bird. Yeah, it's my fault. I didn't bag them. So I decided to bag the very last one, just like with the Barbados cherry, right? The acerola. If you don't bag them, you lose them. So if you uh, snooze, you lose, even with uh, mangoes in Melbourne. They're absolutely vicious, the wildlife. And I don't care about what you say, that we should love the birds and give them some water because that's what's behind the um, pecking. Well, I don't, I don't buy that. Giving them water, giving the birds water is like saying, thank you very much for coming, uh, here's your reward. It's like patting them on the back. So no, I'm not gonna be friendly at all with the birds. So guys, we're left with uh, only one Glen Mango. Just one. And he's not gonna get knocked off with, uh, from the birds. I should have done this with the last five. There was one there, there was one back there, there was one there, and there was one back there. And uh, the birds just peck, peck, knocked them off. Just for fun. Yeah, I don't think they did it because they were thirsty. I, I just don't buy that. It's because they're a pain, they're a nuisance. So, uh, that's the bad news. The good news, guess what? The, well, you should be able to see it. It's visible on camera. The good news is visible, guys. Who can see the good news? Hmm? The good news is we've gained at least ooh, 10 to 12 inches, 25 centimeters of top growth since the birds knocked the fruit off. So you might say, well, the birds were a blessing in disguise. Well, I still don't buy it. We've got this new shoot here in the last um, two weeks. This uh, burgundy, all that there. They came in two weeks. Yep, that's a whopping um, extension, really quick. And then we got this one here. That's about mm, almost the same, 10 inches. And then we got this one, a further 10 inches growth. And that one, another 10, and smaller ones down here, right? Three, four, five inches, and two inches, and they're all mixed, and around here. And these little ones coming, right? These are like just starting now. So that's the good news. The good news is we got some height on the tree. Wow. So now the tree is no longer four foot five, it's over five feet. And, um, aiming for six feet or getting closer to two meters which is um, probably the top of that uh, uh, lattice or trellis up there so another 12 inches and it's uh, hit the two meter mark in ground by the way we're talking about our in ground mango in Melbourne for those that are new to the channel welcome this is not a pot this is not in a pot and let me show you right we're outside we're not in a in the sunroom or in a greenhouse. Okay. It's a big deal here. Everyone in the tropics watching this is laughing. Well, it's a bit like you trying to grow an apple or a, a pear up in uh, the daintree. Then I'll be laughing, right? So it goes, guys. So it's slowly coming together. The um, the fully tropical um, fruit garden at Fruitopia. It's taken time. That's taken 
five years. The, the mango. Well, all, everything here is five years. Um, between five and seven years, the I put the bananas and the um, uh, pineapple guavas in seven years ago, and the mango five years ago. So I'm planning on putting some more mangoes up at the front there. Let's go up there and have a look. That's next spring, not now. Now it's all over, Red Rover. Come April, the, the show is over in Melbourne. But come October, October 22, after these bananas have fruited, well, not that one, that, that one's not, that one's gonna be left alone. I'm gonna leave that one. But this mother, here in the middle, she's gonna fruit, right? Sometime between today and uh, spring, October. So my plan is um, to pull this out after it's finished fruiting. If it doesn't fruit, I'll just pull it out anyway. I'll give it enough chance, maybe till November, because the um, change of season here in Melbourne between winter and summer varies. It's anywhere between October, November and December. It varies from year to year. It's not like the tropics where come 1st of October, hey everyone, it's time to go for a swim. No. That's not what happens here. Here you go for a swim anywhere between the 1st of October and the 1st of January. Yeah, it's a three month wait, depending on the weather. Yeah, it's very, it varies every year. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna put a mango in here. Grafted, we're talking grafted mangoes. And further up, I'm going to do exactly the same here between these two hibiscus which are very pretty right we love our pretty tropical flowers guys so these two are going to be pulled out as well these two bananas I don't want to do it because they're pretty they give a tropical um, landscape but um, it's valuable um, space guys the reason being that behind me it's full Sun all day it's uh, facing north let's turn around this is north yeah all day Sun starting from there which is close to the house starting from here going all the way to here to the mailbox so all this is full sun in winter and summer all year round and there's no obstacles there's no large trees in the way I got rid of them these would be tall pine trees here and conifers got rid of everything guys and replace everything replace all the pines with fruit trees so that's the plan for next spring one mango here and one over there I was gonna put one up there as well but that's too close to the street that's too close to the street right I don't want the um, the mango being within eyesight of passerbys so this banana will stay and look at it cute huh it's gonna flower for us and fruit so what do you guys think good idea of course it's a good idea it's a brilliant idea I should have done it years ago so um, next we go and have a look at the Bowen seedling. And there's the um, Cassar Apple Latemoya. Right, Paxton Prolific, which hasn't been prolific at all so far with any fruit, just flowers everywhere. It's the flower tree. But they will come, the, the fruit always comes, but it comes late. It comes in March. March is the end, it's the end of summer. So good luck trying to grow cussed apple in Melbourne's um, winter. So, and I tried hand pollinating, so don't stop me with that. Been trying for six weeks, no luck. And this is my, this is meant to be a self a self um, pollinating cussed apple. So I don't know why it's not doing it from since Christmas. Okay, this is the Bowen or Kensington Pride seedling, and it's doing great, guys really really good 
So there is a lot of good news in between all the, um, um, you know, bad luck. So it's got one, two, three, four brand new shoots and they're like 20 inches long, right? At least 40 to 50 centimeters. These guys, they came over summer and at the bottom or in the middle, two arms. This one, this arm here, and this one. Two long arms. So that's seven. Hang on. Two, four, six. That's six um, new branches that we got over summer, which weren't there in um, November 21. So that's awesome. So moving along past the pomelo, the Nam Roy, which is doing great. Citrus is so easy here, and so is uh, white sapoti. But check out this. Look what happened to the white sapoti during January, the hottest January in Melbourne in eight years. Got scorched. Look at that. Look at those um, baked donuts. See, guys? That's why I had problems with the sooks. The sooks out in the um, hot sun got baked from dailies. You see that? Now you understand my frustration. So yeah, we need a shade cloth in um, summer and a greenhouse in winter. More work. Oh, look what got stuck here. Passion fruit. So this is the um, banana can. I took off all these flowers last week with the scissors. Clip, clip, clip. Clip, 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 and clip. Cut them all off. So now we're waiting for we're waiting for growth, guys. On banana can in-ground um, grafted mango and over here we have the manila mango or the carabao it's 12 noon right now so they're just getting hit by sun by the uh, sun from the northerly direction right this will get piping hot this brick all afternoon right 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 past midnight in summer so a little bit of new growth here on the uh, manila mango it got scorched though when it started pushing um in january it just coincided with a heat wave we had in january so these got scorched but this they're struggling to keep going it didn't give up there's no die back but that's um still a baby all right let's go to the um to the back guys and this banana is becoming a bit of a nuisance growing behind the uh, Suriname cherry. When I planted the, that banana uh, six years ago, this Suriname cherry was um, 10 inches tall. <laughs> it was like a little thing down there, like a little stick. And then boof, it exploded in growth. And now we're stuck with bananas behind it. Yeah, and that's already fruited for us five times, that banana, in the last six years. So it's hard for me to pull it out. All right. Let's go and have a look at the mangoes in the backyard. But excellent news on the Glen. All right, guys. I'm in the back now. Check out the uh, jujube. Whoa. Kim's there doing the laundry. We're going to the beach again. Beach, beach, beach. So, the mangoes are all the way at the back in the new fruit patch. And that gets hit with sun at noon. So all morning there's no sun back here. None. Because of that damn pine tree. I was hoping the neighbors back there would get rid of it but he's not budging he says nope even if you pay me to do it I'm still not gonna do it so he's been very um, 
stubborn. So no morning sun, that's where the sun uh, comes up behind that tree. No morning sun whatsoever for all these new tropicals in this area. But now at 12 noon, it's starting to, um, to come through. Okay, this is what I did last week. I planted three grafted mango trees back here. Um, that one there, where are we? That one there, and this one here, these two. And one in the middle, all the way back there. And you can see again, the scorching damage from January. Hang on. There, look. Huh? I'm telling you, these took a beating. These took a beating, these mangoes. Everything took, well not everything, the loquat didn't care. I wonder why loquats don't care about heat waves. Or macadamia, they don't care. Huh? Or bananas. Bananas didn't, were, were completely unaffected by the 37 Celsius that we had for five days in a row. Not affected at all, but mangoes were. And the, um, um, many other plants were too. Anyway, this mango here is uh, the keet, which supposedly does well in cooler climates. And um, it's grafted. And it's holding a fruit, guys. Now, I know all the purists are going to jump and shake their feet and yell remove it remove it take it off take it off i can't guys i can't do it it's too big it's bigger than the glen mango it's double the size of the glen so i'm just gonna go i'm gonna risk it i'm gonna just go for it and if i lose the tree oh well next okay Koh Savoy is the next one Koh Savoy. And that had about 20 fruitlets. I took them all off. So they're all gone. They were tiny. And next, this little guy here, who also had fruitlets, which I removed. And this one, what happened to its label? It fell down. Is the Sensation Dwarf Mango. So another dwarf like um, Banana Ken. He's not looking very happy. Um, but yeah, so they're the three mangoes I planted at the end of January, January 25th, 28th, around uh, Australia Day. So wish me luck on those three guys. And then I have a couple of other mangoes which are struggling, again, from all the heat damage in um, January. Struggling, big time struggling. And that one there, I don't even know if it's gonna make it, the R2E2. Mm, I put him in the shade under the banana. And then the losses, these are the three mangoes I lost in January during the heat wave. Those there, those three. The Valencia Pride, the Alfonso, and Brooks Late. I just I just picked that up like <laughs> one week, um, um, one week after I picked this tree up, it died because it came when it was 37 degrees. <sighs> Done by mangoes. Done by any tropicals in January, guys. Not good. So that's the update on... Oh yeah, I got one more, sorry. One more mango. That's how we learn, by the way, by, by all our mistakes. It's, it's um, expensive or costly, but it's the same for anything else, right? Like if you buy a nice sports car or, or anything, a motorcycle, it's going to break down. So there's ongoing costs with a motorbike and there's ongoing costs with... Um, with anything and my ongoing costs are with mangoes and tropical sooks there they are back there the sooks they're in the shade see them all underneath the uh, ice cream bean the yellow jopiticabas the shepherd mango the cinnamon the imbi and 
a jackfruit, the one in the ground there. See that jackfruit? Yeah, they're all sooks. So I'm protecting them from the, it's not even a hot sun today, it's only 28. But guys, they will suffer. For some reason, they will suffer even in 23, 24 Celsius. I don't know why. So that's why they're in the shade. Okay, back to the, um, the mango seedling, another Bowen. And this one, instead of um, freaking out, like the three dead ones I just showed you in the pots, right? Guess what he did? Instead, he said, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to burn. I'm going to flourish. And he flourished, all right? Look what he did. And this is in the hot sun. There's no protection here at all. This is all day blistering hot sun. Look what he did. Whereas the other ones I just showed you, they, they dried up and died in the pots. This guy, he went in the other direction. And no one can tell me why. <laughs> Come on guys, why? Why did this um, Bowen seedling do this? And the other ones went the other, in the other direction. And the answer is, you don't know. That's the answer. You have no idea why. It's luck of the draw. So luck of the draw means um, doing, doing um, the best you can, tweaking it when it doesn't work, and then um, hoping for luck. This is lucky. Right? This is lucky. This should not have happened. I mean, it just happened overnight. And I haven't done anything special in the amendment department. This is native soil. I put it into native soil. And on top of the native soil, I just put mulch, grass clippings. That's it. It's sitting in loam, native loam with clay underneath. Well, I put some gypsum in there too. So, yeah, that's the mango collection in late summer at Fruitopia. Mind you, I planted him here uh, two months ago. He's been there since the very beginning of summer, early December. So he, he had um, two whole months to get established for that to occur. This only occurred um, 10 days ago, that new growth. That's only 10 days old. So I'm hoping these three mangoes that I planted last week will surprise me as well sometime at the end of um, summer. The what did we say this was the Kosovoy? Oh, the sensation. Sensation, surprise me, please. This is the Kosovoy, surprise me, please. And the Keat, surprise me, guys. Come on, give me some results for all my efforts and determination. All right, guys, we're off to the beach now. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. And I know what many of you purists will say. <laughs> You're so predictable. And uh, the rest of you, well, thanks for the support. And uh, we need a lot of support, guys, to keep going. It's very easy to be um, sent running from this um, hobby because of all the brick walls that we hit. Not uh, only with fruit trees, even with vegetables. There's a lot of things I can't explain. <sighs> Where do I even start? The tomatoes that almost died on me around Christmas, they just mysteriously decided to come back. They changed their mind. They didn't want to die. They wanted to come back and start uh, fruiting. We've had over 50 tomatoes in the last month. And the same with the zucchinis. They wanted to die as well in December. They decided to come back and now we've been eating zucchinis every day. Go figure. I didn't make any changes. Alright guys. See you from the next video.